Welcome, welcome to H2O World 2017. This is our third event in this venue. And we do it every alternate year, of course. And in between, we, we've done an open tour in different cities. It's really exciting to see a ton of uh, response for our call for the community to come. It's a community event, so uh, don't let us become too corporate too soon, right? Um, our goal is to democratize intelligence, and it starts with bringing a lot of, um, and when I say intelligence, the, we drop the word artificial, um, no hype, all real. Um, intelligence in different forms, whether how to use AI is just as important as AI itself. And we think that bringing it to as many hands as possible is the core mission of H2O, the company and the community. And we are committed to bringing it to as many audiences worldwide as possible, making it ubiquitous. Our, our real uh, theme is, of course, time is only non-renewable resource, but all of us have a shared destination, and we all want to get as much done before we get there. One of the, one of the things we've discovered in the last um, few, few months is what the, world has, the rest of the world had discovered, and that was the speed, speed up from GPUs. Thousand dimension data set. Um, every dot on that is a full fledged generalized linear method, completely automated. We're trying to build a search for accuracy in time. We hold the world record on CPUs, and for years we've demonstrated that with pride, and then we discovered that we could really make it faster. Thanks to our partnership with NVIDIA, the stocks you'll see later today and the rest of the week, rest of the days. We've managed to really bring this race to, to a fair conclusion. I think in the audience I saw Stephen. He was, he was like a child watching this search for accuracy when we were building it in the labs. Um, of course, we could have staircased the green path here and gone into the accurate model long before we got started on the other chariot. But the walls has begun. So 4,000 models before we could get to 125 gives you a rough wall clock time. This is exactly how the experiment took in the labs. So then we powered those, um, the GPU-based algorithms. So obviously it's not human drivable anymore. So we created the product Driverless AI. The team has been working relentlessly. Most companies are lucky if they build one product in their life, in their startups, life, life epoch. <clears throat> the team, H2O, and the community together has put together the second marble um, in, in, in less than five years. So what you're seeing here is a completely automated um, end-to-end -end experimentation life cycle. Um, Experiments, of course, um, data scientists today on a day-to-day -day basis spend a vast amount of time. Each dot on this is one GBM, XGBoost. Um, we embrace XGBoost, which is a popular open source um, gradient boosting machine, and made it GPU stable, GPU ready, GPU accurate. And then, of course, 
they had assigned to spend a vast bulk of the time doing feature engineering. So what you're seeing is with the world's fastest automatic feature engineering engine, curated carefully by a very powerful gradient boosting machine, right, sort of. So you see the, the race for accuracy now actually become real, where who will default payment next month out of a small Kaggle data set is completely um, curated end-to-end -end problem produced, and towards the end, you get the actual pipeline from the model and, and the feature transformation. Of course, at, um, as you can see, it's using an eight-way GPU uh, system. You'll hear a detailed talk about this later in the day as well. And throughout the days, there's a booth out there where we can demonstrate. About 1,200 downloads of this product have happened in the last two months. 600 of them have been initiated. And roughly 285, 300 of them are actually installed and running. So we are getting a lot of feedback from customers and users and prospects and we are, as we try to curate the improvements on this. We call this automatic DL, auto DL, um, not to be confused with d deep learning, it's actually automatic. Dimitri Larko, one of our Kaggle grandmasters, will pull him on stage um, later towards the tail end of the talk. But um, this is trying to digitally mimic a data scientist, a good, or a, a very good data scientist who can build models for you at scale continuously and all he needs is GPUs. Of course, Dimitri also loves his GPUs. Now, that uh, experiment run slightly before, finishes here. You can see kind of the overall experimental um, output. The key thing to understand there is, of course, about 4,000 features were completely tested, engineered, and, select, and some of them were selected. Um, and 4,000 features take months to prepare in your typical life cycle of an experiment. So that's, um, as you can see, the last data point there where it's the race search for accuracy ends in the top score towards the tail end. We've had um, folks play with this already and getting, getting a ton of feedback from customers. Most importantly, some of them have exclaimed that they could see accuracy improved gains of very large percentage, up to 10% gains with an overnight run, which would, be, which would have taken hundreds of data scientists for months to work on. One of the things um, that um, you'll be, we'll be talking about is interpretability of models. Model explainability has never been more valuable than today. Trust in models is, is very important. Um, and AI's adoption has a few big uh, problems. One is the adoption from not having enough resources, enough people. And of course, the digital data scientists can kind of get you there where AI to do AI will help you there. But the second big piece is trust. How do I trust when my model is working? when it's not working. Here's a, a MLI um, interpretability. Again, you'll hear a talk about this later today, going into several details. Can I get an English interpretation for my model? The product has been, um, as you can see, two different, three different views on your model, both from a surrogate model from a decision tree and a variable a K line method and partial dependency plots. And before, before we jump a unique uh, piece, we added this into the product, automatic visualization. And here, um, Lee, Lee Wilkinson and his team take off from where they left at other places and bring in kind of um, correlation graphs, automatic outlier detections, show me the vistas on my in my data that matters, that I can look at. I'm not interested in building them manually one by one. Give me the automatic um, 
the columns that matter, the, dim the dimensions that are interesting. Of course, um, classic statistically very, very important charts like the radar plot and the heat map kind of gives you a plethora of innovation that's been behind in the last nine months um, at H2O. So that's the, um, the product. A ton of um, really interesting stuff went behind this, including data table, which is doing most of the feature engineering for us, all the columnar um, transformations, a lot of feature transformations, uh, as you can see, cluster distance, um, don't, um, truncated SVD, a lot of really powerful, statistically important um, target encoding. So you see a lot of um, the product has prevention of several common pitfalls like outlier detection, uh, sorry, like overfitting and leakage. So, so a bunch of really powerful um, pieces baked in to allow you to drive faster. So with that, um, I want to So I would say, welcome to H2O World. Today has been probably the record attendance in H2O. Um, 700 in person and 500 live stream are expected. Our last conference was half as much, half as large, and the conference before was half as large. So you're kind of seeing that exponential growth in the adoption um, of the product and attendance at H2O. I think I've seen at least one from India or in person, and Dublin. Um, we've seen a few folks from from uh, down under, and um, a, a very large portion from California in New York. Europe's been bustling for us. We have invested in our community manager in Europe, Joe Fai, who has been killing it. But we have also opened offices in in Prague, which has led to a very um, solid growth of the technology team. H2 open source adoption is at an all-time high. So it's quite um, remarkable, um, the kind of the conviction and the support of the community has brought us this far, as you can see, over the last three years. This is the third edition of the product which we released in, um, in the July of 2015. And you can see here, pretty much on a tear. So the, um, and driverless AI has only made it even more. The team is, we, we are proud to say about 12,500 companies are today using H2O. And we crossed kind of our, our targets for the year of 100,000 uh, data scientist users. Open source is the defense of community with code. And that hasn't changed. This was the same philosophy with which we started the company. There are probably other people who are doing things in our space, but we are doing this with a philosophy that's our own. We think of freedom, and freedom is not free, as we live in times where freedom is very precious. And it's about pull, not push. And PR is pull requests. And we actually believe that people have to make software, not just consume it. And when we say people, our customers, our enterprises need to participate in the, in the process of code. So we were quite excited that the open AI movement has happened right around us. Now is the time to build a more um, a data products that lead to real application of AI. And so our philosophy, which we started about three, about six years ago with the same philosophy of nurture community love with data products is still just as intact. We've been building more open source. Um, our commitment to open source is we're doubling down on it. And H203 AutoML, which is, we expect AutoML to be the second best, if not the best, automatic machine learning after driverless AI. And driverless AI will be using AutoML. H2O for GPUs is a 100% open source project which we released. Our commitment to data table and bringing data table to Python, PyData table, um, major uh, investment on part of our team. Um, sparkling water, we're, we're seeing about, about a third of our community users are in sparkling water. And uh, using M M production in several large, you'll, you'll see several talks during the course of this two days 
that will have both the production usages of H2O3, sparkling water, and probably the earliest usages of H2O for GPU. Our presence at GTC has definitely pushed more of these products into the fore. We, we learned a heck of a lot from deep water and then decided that Keras is doing exactly what we intended to do in deep water. So we'll be moving most of our customers who are trying to use deep water to Keras. Our vision has not changed to build deep ecosystems. We believe that we need to, there's an opportunity here to raise a whole forest, not just a tree. And ecosystems grow by giving. And we are giving source and we are getting a ton of feedback in terms of your usage. And your feedback is what we crave. As you build, as we want to build more platforms, I think feedback will be super important for the growth of the community and the ecosystem. We have partnerships with NVIDIA, IBM, the cloud vendors have been um, spectacular. We've been seeing a ton of adoption across the whole, uh, the deep investments in the partnerships ecosystem there. Of course, the data science workbenches, the Hadoop distributions, Plunk, we've been doing some uh, connections with um, scoring engines, deployments in production, whether in the form of Domino or datascience.com or seeing um, SIGOPT. We've built a lot of partnerships where customers needed it, Algorithmia. But um, data companies is kind of what we crave. Most AI companies are bereft of data. And that's where we, we will intend to build some strong partnerships with customers and data companies. So a big thank you to the team, of course, the community and the customers. It's with a lot of gratitude we, we are here today. Uh, welcoming you to the H2O World 2017. Data is a team sport, and the team sports are not uh, possible without having a very diverse set of talent pool. So the number one um, adoption problem for AI today is not technology, it's actually people. Getting such diverse, talented people in one single place is kind of the number one, it's the rate limiting step we have today. And of course, different products we've been innovating are on those border lines. So you avoid that conversion between one to the other. The, trans the, the conversation between one to the other becomes a product, not just people. So of course, and, and of course, driverless AI is one of those first examples of what we're doing. And, and of course, H2O built the first bridge between code and science. And now with driverless AI, we're taking it one step further. But this is a problem you face when you go back to do data science in large in, 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 at customers. And then how do we incentivize teams? Still, I mean, the vast bulk of, um, of compensation schemes, incentivization schemes in companies are not team-based. They're still individual-based. They expect anecdotal um, evidence and rock stars to be the, the driving force behind change. I think team sports need to be more encouraged in, in the day-to-day -day business activity. And this is a corner uh, stone of how we build our products. Most of our, our team comes from across the world at this point, and um, actually forgot New Zealand. But um, really, a vast bulk of really very talented team. It's, it is the dream team that we put together for AI. And, um, and it's quite an quite a honor to be leading the team to build a product that will take, take, um, take it to the masses. So quite excited, Every, each one of them um, quite, quite precious for, for the company and the community. Culture is the co-founder and startups are nothing but team sports. And we've tried to really disseminate as much of um, the founding theme amongst our engineers. And, uh, we call them entrepreneurs in residence, not, not employees. We had a recent interesting Wired article where the Wired um, magazine editor was in the office. And we had way too many people around him. He liked it. And he actually participated in Kaggle himself. So we have about three of the top um, 95 Kaggle grandmasters, probably now going to five. Pretty, really um, 
solid folks. You'll see them tomorrow um, on the panel later tonight. So we ha probably have the Kaggle Grandmaster 1, 2, and 5 on the same panel. So spot a Kaggle Grandmaster becomes a really uh, a interesting task to do at this conference. What are the KPIs for your data lake? What is, I mean, driverless AI is, of course, trying to push for a data engineer gives data and data scientist produces pipelines. That's your whole loop there. So experimentation becomes the core theme behind how you do science. I mean, science hasn't changed much from the Galilean time to now. How many experiments can I, can I cram in a day? And that's roughly the output of a lab. I think what in industrialization of, of experimentation is roughly what we're looking at. And how many pipelines can I build? How many features can I, can I detect in my data? It's roughly not, so it's not definitely measuring data in terms of terabytes and petabytes is kind of old school. That's the way, that's saying Einstein had 1.5 kilograms of brain matter. Our vision is to make experiments faster, cheaper, and reproducible and accurate. And that's roughly the core mission behind making data science even more accessible for companies without data scientists. The learning rate of your organization depends on how ruthlessly you can, how effortlessly you can build, do experiments and how, if it's very cheap, you can experiment as rapidly as you can and change the processes in your organization. Automation is key for industrial strength AI. And that's the core thesis, and that's the theme of this conference. You'll see automatic machine learning, automatic strategies in automatic machine learning, and, and, and themes of automatic feature engineering that will pop. So use prevention of common pitfalls and time killers, whether it's overfitting, leakage, reporting, um, visualization. A lot of uh, compliance-related reporting takes away tons of hours after the model has been built. And that's a big, big killer of time. We want to come up with a consistent AI studio that you can build models rapidly, build feature transformations more accurately and efficiently and safely without leaking signal from one side to the other side, from the train to the test side. And that's the core thesis behind how we are organized our uh, product life cycles, is how do we give you a very a safe studio that you can debug production model fitness when models gone wrong, all models are wrong, and some models are useful. How do you detect drifts in your models when they have already entered production because the distribution of your data has changed? We also are big fans of specialized AI. Just like specialization in human intelligence, we expect specialization in artificial intelligence just as common. And so while there are big fears of generalized AI, I think in the interim we are going to focus on vertical recipes and reduce the cost of doing things in the vertical, one at a time, finance, insurance, healthcare. The value has shifted to asset light and interaction rich platforms. We are focused, trying to push towards a bigger microservice mindset, not just monolithic apps. We expect enterprises to be reinventing themselves with a lot of micro businesses. And you see a very, um, of course, credit scoring, lending, anti-money laundering, KYC, several talks during the next course of the next two days. We'll focus on some of these. And how do you reduce the cost of a controller or an accountant or a payroll system? This is kind of where AI is headed in our, in our view of the world, um, enterprise AI view of the world. And driverless AI has started as a whiteboard vision. It's now entered kind of the first 1.1 version, 1.0.10, uh, actually, to, speci to be specific. And our vision of it as more as recipes and series of recipes and visual elements that are loosely tied to each recipe. We are, as you can see, quite happy embracing other open source phenomenon just as we were from the day one, whether it was TensorFlow or sklearn or CNTK or LightGBM. And also in the cloud, we will exploit the native cloud machine learning. So we tightly connected, coupled with the native machine learning and giving you a cloud neutral way of doing things. 
And so your experimentation on the platform side will be relieved from having to recode most of these algorithms to different hardware architectures or different cloud architectures. And of course, being able to take um, advantage of native containers, like on the NVIDIA DGX container, will probably connect to the local native deep learning and exploit its speed. But the core mission for us is starts with the user experience and connecting it to different data connectors and being able to deploy it across different platforms, have metrics as a telemetry, That's, and the pipelines and the history of your pipelines. This is the mission that the team has embarked on, and a ton of that has come together in, in kind of early ways of looking at this thing. The fundamental unit of our kind of innovation is around recipes. Automatic feature engineering recipe, the auto DL recipe from Dimitri Narco, that's essentially covering a vast bulk of IID data sets. We're expanding into time series data sets probably towards the beginning of Q1 2018, if not earlier. And then going further down to NLP and deep learning. The idea here is that recipe authoring can run parallel. We want dozens of recipes in place while the UX improvements, automatic visualization and interpretation can be done in parallel. Um, and so this really is kind of where we see the future of the data center, where data is coming in but continuous model life cycle is maintained based on the right recipe picked for your problem. The, the interesting connection is the connection from driverless AI to H2O and sparkling water which is really at the top, where you can retrain at scale and connect it back to the data centers. Your investment in the current Hadoop slash Spark ecosystem remains intact as you take things away from the Python-based architecture that gets, does the training and finding the best model and connecting it to the clusters. Again, there's a really deep talk on this that Arno will head later in the day. Our vision is to power as many applications as possible. That's the key. How quickly can we get software to come into the realm of science? The monetization of data really is left to business process change. If you can improve your process faster and make it more agile, you have the real benefits in, and the wins of data. AI is nothing but the monetization engine for your data. The rise of the chief AI officer, that's a um, new trend, right? So, and, at, and, at H, and at H2O, the chief AI officer's project will be, a, a, will be an AI program. So hopefully, that's when we think that AI has actually achieved that kind of strategy. But what is your AI strategy is a question that everyone is asking. And the outputs of most, of most AI is going to be a data product. Or I revisit the data product almost a few times. That's how we got started. The focus is to go from rule-based applications to pattern recognition-based applications and move from internal to the external. Our external world is the one that we've, the community, the meetups, that's the external world that brought us this far. Pretty grassroots, very block and tackle on a weekly basis we did about two meetups in the early days of the company every week, to now about thousands of them. It's not uncommon for um, the, even the ENN team to be producing four meetups a week or on the same day, so worldwide. I think the community has grown dramatically through our simple external interactions. What's the data product? Well, one of the data products won the award recently for international auditing product of the year and um, GL.AI is an X-ray into a general ledger, co-engineered closely, um, coupled with our customers. We see a lot more of these vertical innovations happening in the years ahead. Trust in AI, and we briefly touched this topic earlier, interpretable AI is not just for regulators, it's also to gain trust, to be able to build that um, an automatic build that um, interpretability, approximate interpretation to an accurate model. Catch Patrick um, all talking about this later in this, in this conference. Automatic visualization, Lee and the team are going to be presenting automatic visualization in one of the talks this week. 
visual intelligence starts where data science ends. Data journalism is roughly how we consume data. And data journalism is today where we found data science about five, six years ago. So the world needs a lot more data journalists. And, and, and being that curious about how, what the data really is saying and how to tell that story back to your audience, back to your grandchildren one day. And that's roughly the goal of, of visual intelligence. Another. So the transformation, um, one of the things we learned large companies do very well is invest in, in its people. And entrepreneurship I found to be much, just as hard or much harder than even entrepreneurship. And everyone needs to transform themselves to bring that change. And change is hard. So bringing change means you're willing to fail, willing to risk what, you're, what you already have. We, we learned a heck of a lot from children, and I think the best place to be is to be a child in observing the world. A beginner's joy, a beginner's eyes are super critical to build the second generation product line of any company. It's the child's curiosity and playful fearlessness that's needed to risk going from H2O, which was H2O3, to driverless AI and just taking it and asking you guys to give it the feedback that it needs, give it the nurturing it needs. But second products of most companies don't exist for decades. And, and I think the, the team has definitely done, done its part in looking at the world in a fresh pair of eyes. I would like to invite the team one by one to the stage and let's give them a, an, an, a standing applause. Prithvi, Arno, Tom, Mikhail, Dimitri. They are just representations, representatives of a phenomenal team behind them, but it would be good to have a quick word on the lessons of the driverless AI. So Prithvi put together the brilliant visualization and UX that you're seeing at the stage. Auto DL. Can you hear me? Oh. Uh, okay. Thank you for all, to all of you for for being here. Uh, my name is Dmitry Larko. I'm a Kaggle Grandmaster, and I'm the brain behind the Drive CI. So, yeah, you know, the then the first time she asked me about, hey, can you put some of your you know automatic feature engineering inside of the Drive CI? I, I thought to myself, hey, it's impossible. So and. After six months from that point, actually, I found myself standing on this stage explaining and talking to you about automatic feature engineering. So basically, yeah, that's long story short. <laughs> the first time I saw Dimitri was at a meetup, and that was three and a half years ago. And since then, we've been trying to get him as on, the, on board, and we're so glad he's here. Prithvi, every time we walk in with this iconic skin of the product, People ask, assume that we have a design team that has essentially been taken over and brought a brilliant visualization to bear. But the brilliant, the, the massive workforce of 100 people is embodied in Prithvi. So. Uh, yeah, it's been an amazing journey so far. It's been a privilege to work with uh, the driverless AI team, especially uh, Arno and Dimitri and uh, automatic visualization, which is Leland. Uh, Leland is probably the second most prolific engineer in the company and is still going strong. Uh, and he's built a, a bunch of amazing stuff under the hood that he'll be, he'll be demonstrating um, later, later today. And, uh, and the H2O team and the H2O for GPU team, uh, um, all of those, all of their hard work has gone under, uh, under the hood of driverless AI and uh, you'll be seeing the results of that uh, today and tomorrow. Thank you. And, and you'll see um, Prithvi in, in the Indian 
um, Sanskrit means earth, and two thirds of earth is H2O. So in, in, in this case, it's, it's 100%. So um, Mikhail um, led the platform team. Um, Mikhail and we have another Mikhail Kurkab. It, wouldn't be, it, wouldn't, it would quite be impossible for us to deliver two products of the same size of the team in just the same amount of time, nine months. And so it's um, quite incredible. Um, it's, a, it's kind of a um, testament to the team having been able to deliver a platform of two platforms in the same year. Yeah, hello, hello. So, yeah, thank you. So, main, uh, like, thanks is for, like, three giving us the vision and keep, keeping us busy. Also the sales team and customer support team and customer success team, which has like drive us and challenge our like uh, development skills and also like the architecting and giving us ideas. And then of course, Prithvi and Arno like driving the new platform. And we are keeping with Michal and the rest of the team, the old, uh, old platform, H2O3, alive and full of new features, full of new choice. And still, you know, I'm with the company almost from the beginning, five years, so there was like a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of pain and a lot of fun, but still the pain uh, and the fun is still there, but still the most is just the fun in the process. That's the main key. And working with all the people, and right now we have a lot, lot of new people, a lot of young people, and it's really amazing to work with them on a lot of, uh, as I said, a lot of fun. Mikhail um, delivered twins this year at home and at work. So. <laughs> Congratulations. So Tom brought, the, Tom brought the product to a three minute install um, or less than three minute install. It was fun to see a customer challenge his team um, a couple of weeks ago in Dallas, saying, if, if it takes more than three minutes to install, I will buy you lunch, and otherwise, you'll buy me lunch. So it was a great challenge, and Tom packaged everything and just got perfectly shaped into the Docker file and runs in and VDocker. We'll see the demo of it later. but. Um, this is the second, uh, second time in a row Tom has brought a product to, to life. Yeah, thank you. Um, and it's great to see so many people here um, at our third H2O world that we had from, from our first H2O world and, and all of the new folks as well, both uh, in the audience and as part of the team. Thanks for, for coming. Um, the uh, product that, that she was talking about and showed before, every one of you is going to have a chance to try it today. So. Um, uh, at the one o'clock session, Arno is going to demo, demo it for you, and uh, you will all get a chance to follow along if, if you want to. Um, thanks to, uh, to Jeff for, for kind of getting the, the DevOps part of it um, started off, and, and um, I just took it over from there, and, and now it's all uh, available for all of you. So th thanks for, uh, for being here, and, and give it a shot. This is uh, Python first and CUDA um, core. It's a whole Docker, completely different from our pure Java installation of H203. What were the big, big challenges? There? Yeah, re really the idea was to have um, lots of GPU machines out there um, looking for applications to run and basically taking a software appliance and being able to put it on uh, those different uh, platforms and, and really enabling them for, for new things and, and new, new challenges. Well, you'll get a taste of the real thing in just after lunch, so thanks, Tom. And then, without further ado, Arno, who's going to have it, who has a session of his own on driverless AI. Arno joined us four years ago as a physicist, five years ago now, as physicist and hacker. Um, and it was um, our our interview was just pretty straightforward, as looking at video of hadron colliders doing all the fluid mechanics part, which was pretty simple, beautiful stuff. But since then, he's kind of become the, the fastest hacker in the, in the building and um, continues to be the fastest hacker. I think Lee's just second. But, um, but it's really incredible to see. And, and H2O did the right thing and asked him to push the next generation product. So how is driving driverless AI? It's a dream come true. And uh, please, hands up to our team, amazing people.
And now, thanks to you all for being here. This really motivates us a lot. When I started four or five years ago at H2O, I was already in machine learning. I was like, wow, that's cool, automating all these algorithms. Then a few years later, deep learning, all these things came up, all amazing stuff. And the one thing I never could do was feature engineering. <laughs> I was always like, hmm, what can I do? I can tune, I can do all these brute force attacks, try all kinds of you know, parameters, see what happens. But I would never beat Mark Landry, who brought data science to the company, if you want. And I wish he was here right now to at least raise his hand. Um, he's probably in a hackathon somewhere doing the other ha uh, machine learning challenge, which is how we met. And in all these Kaggle challenges, I, he was always ahead of me, and I never knew how to like get close. But now I know how to. I'll take Dimitri's knowledge, I'll program it in, and I'll let the machine take over. And uh, that actually works. And you'll see that at 1 o'clock. GPUs are amazing. Um, these smart people are amazing. It's just fun to be with this team. And uh, Shri's vision and culture is, is really what bonds us together. It's, it's more than just smart people. It's the enabling of smart people to do what they want to do, to thrive in their happiness, to just be productive, and really enjoy everything they do. There's, there's nothing that I feel like I'm forced to do, right? And that's how everybody feels in the company. It's just. Whatever you like to do, whatever you can do, you should do. And it's always about what's right, and that's what we do. So thanks again, Sri. Thank you. <laughs> Big up for the team, and the team which couldn't be on stage. I, I, obviously, the, the picture of the team was, was um, presented earlier, but you will see them in full, um, full action and, and live and in person and every. And our, sa our sales and marketing teams, the marketing team is a team of now three or four people, but really great people. As you can see, they've delivered a ton of great marketing for the company and, and the product, especially Travelers AI has had some insane coverage over the last four months. Uh, it won the Reader's Choice Award on InfoWorld um, and several really, um, um, the number of, uh, the, the rate of adoption of Travelers AI is probably off the charts compared to the rate of, of adoption of the early days. It mimics the early days of H203. I think we, we're going to see something really interesting come out of this um, marketing effort. Our sales team, when people go to LinkedIn and look for a sales team, they find very little salespeople at H2O. The answer is we call ourselves customer experience. We are really focused on the end user experience, your experience, and our community teams are our only brand ambassadors. Our sales teams are roughly customer experience. They're really focused on the relationship long term. Open source is a very long game. And I think what we have learned in the last few years is building brands is the easiest, the easiest way to build brands is through open source because code speaks, right? Sort of. And that's what this is about. The makers are making the brand. And it's straight and everything that comes between the maker and the user is some sense an overhead in general in, in, our, in the company's philosophy. But what we've unleashed is freedom to the maker. And that's roughly the, 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 the fingers with the most knowledge that are able to make the decisions on the product. And that leads to really great innovation. This is a sample of the, of the folks we have. I think there's folks that we have built in who are growing rapidly and will probably be leading some of the products we'll be unleashing onto the marketplace in the next few years. So thank you so much. Code is indeed changing the world, but code is a commodity. And that's the dichotomy of, that we live in today, where open source makes code 100% commodity. Data plus AI is bringing a next generation software. We call it Dataware. It is the new software hardware. It is going to be completely different. It is understanding programs statistical behavior, not just logical behavior. It's a new form of, of building things. And it needs a new form of tools and tool chain. And simplification. Of course, we've seen this one where the mojo encapsulates the science and plugs it into the edge on different clusters, GPU clusters, CPU clusters, 
but really this encapsulation is roughly the, at the heart of how we see AI enabling the edge, AI enabling the software at the edge. But AI is eating hardware just as fast. We are seeing the rise of, of GPUs and ASICs right ahead for us. And finding the right platform for driverless AI is kind of the relentless path and the question we have as a company. And for the community, we want to abstract away all the changes in hardware so you can get the best experience from the science level. So open source AI is here. Thanks to a lot of open source projects out there today. TensorFlow, MXNet, SKLearn, right? So if you have truly seen the emergence of open source AI. But without data, AI is just, just not able to produce you the data where you need. I think the rise of open data ecosystems is what we're going to see in the next five years, if not earlier. Without open data ecosystems, we are going to be at the mercy of the largest data companies in the world. And of course, building alliances and is kind of the road ahead. So this is the path we, we see happening in the broader AI movement. And that needs, that happens what that's must needed, must have for a lot of like core innovations in healthcare, core innovations, unlocking core innovations in understanding the human psyche. So we are seeking data alliances across different verticals and our customers are our partners. And as you have seen, our customers have gone the extra mile and gotten built much deeper partnerships with us. We anticipate a much more curated blockchain world of AI emerging and through horizontal plays in data. The, ma the most important innovations in science were also accidental innovations. And so if you're working on a product in your company which is not necessarily useful for that particular vertical, don't be, um, don't be surprised. That is exactly how science works. But connecting it horizontally across the ecosystem, across, across the community, is roughly what leads to more value. I think that's kind of the core th theme behind RAIN. You'll see us talk about this product more more and more towards the tail end of the year. Driverless AI is the, brings that consistency to build models that can then be published and shared. And we anticipate a much more deeper engagement with our customers and building data products together for royalty or data products together for accuracy and reuse. That's roughly what we want to really embark on in the year, in the year ahead. Of course, um, the biggest piece that we've seen in this, in this war of data is the war from problems that are non-linear. And of course, cancer is one such theme that pervades us. We continue to try and build partnerships in this space with younger startups as well as larger companies. And we've added um, a chief of technology for healthcare. You'll see Sanjay's panels in healthcare panels. Cancer deprived us of the only Fields Medalist, woman Fields Medalist, and Mariam's behind us for that reason. We need to, every generation needs to fight its revolution, and we, we, we do need to pick it up. And without love, there is no revolution. About open source and open data, of course, 40,000 fMRI studies were invalidated earlier uh, last year because of a bug. And software always has bugs, and that's not, not the problem. You cannot rerun those experiments because you don't have data. So I think having and building a common open data ecosystem or blockchain open data ecosystem is the path. You're going to see more and more push for this kind of thinking in the years ahead. Open data ecosystems are going to be critical to fight disease, especially. And consumers are going to integrate that data for us because you own your data. The life cycle of data is essentially changing process. And data science is nothing but pursuit of truth. And we anticipate that that's, 
the biggest transformation that AI can bring is to people, transform ourselves, improving our own processes. Combinatorial innovation of AI is right around the corner. It's still very early days in the AI continent. Hype is actually a real problem. Hype is not a hype thought problem, it is absolutely real. And so we, we want to de-hype the space as much as we can and keep things real. And this community will help us do that. The search for truth is obviously removing that hype, removing that exposure you have between reality and, and, and actually the marketing. And I think the marketing, people expect best world when they're trying to do AI and end up doing just linear regression, so logistic regression if you're lucky. I think bringing the hype level down to day-to-day -day practices of data science is kind of roughly what we are aiming to do. I talked about a lot of non-renewable resources. We want to talk about the only renewable resource that we do have. And that is love, which beats time. With enough passion, we found that you can beat time. And that's kind of what we want to see, both in the next two days of working with the, with, in the conference, but working with the company is of this, this nature, with a social ethos, we're going to need a lot of luck and love. For we are being busy, busy being born or busy dying. And I think if you can't find a cause that's worth dying for, you'd better find one that's worth living for. We have built our company with entrepreneurs and residents, as you've seen some on stage, not employees. And we anticipate a ton of innovation to come, but entrepreneurship to come from this company, the H2O Mafia, will come out in full blast. They've watched me build this company closely, balance sheet to balance sheet. AI is eating software. It's probably the end of the code, as they say. But manufacturing intelligence is like training a billion machines. We are hardly good at training humans. Can we train machines to do the right thing? Is the question people ask. But human beings are beings. It's a process. And AI will definitely optimize processes if you have learned anything. And, and we expect it to make us better humans. But the struggle is indeed the story. The process is the story. That's the story of how we got here. We got here to the love of our community. We got here because our teams worked to defend the community with products. It got here because we were able to scale without a lot of marketing and scale seamlessly because what we are saying is the truth. But the more important piece is we got here because of our customers and partners. It's one of the uh, unique moments in time when the CDC stage of the company was funded by customers and investors, investors from the partner side, which shows a strong sense of conviction on part of our users and customers and community. We are here because of you. And we want to take that as a responsibility to build something meaningful. And the torch you've given us is going to take us a very long way, long enough that we can make AI truly accessible, truly democratized. When we say democratize, sometimes democracy needs democratization. We really mean that everybody is using AI and they don't even know they're using AI. To get to that level of simplicity, we have a few more epochs of products to build and products to bring to you. And that's kind of roughly the journey we have. And we, we really are very excited about this core partnership we built with the community. And one of extreme honesty, but one of tremendous, uh, tremendous, with tremendous humility, I thank on behalf of the company and the team, the rest of the, commu and the community, the participants in our latest round. Of course, you can do anything you can put your mind to. It's roughly whatever. What, that's a message we wanted to give, a message of inspiration for the rest of the audience who are trying to build their own journeys. Thank you for being part of our journey, and welcome to H2World.